Hey, hi guys, uh, my name is Norm Charbonneau and uh, this is my training layout here. As you can see, it's a three rail O scale layout. The dimensions are 29 by 36 feet. I've got two main lines, it's all command control. I'm using Lionel Legacy and Trainmaster Command. And I'm also experimenting with some Lunami DCC technology here. And uh, my layout is set in the late 50s, uh, steam to diesel transition era. So as you can see, I model a lot of Penzi. I also have a lot of uh, Eastern steam like uh, C&O and B&O, and a little bit of Michigan represented here with some Pure Marquette. Um, a lot of my structures are scratch built. Many are uh, kits. A lot of them are featuring uh, interiors with my own uh, custom 3D printed parts. And uh, I hope you guys can come see my layout and, and see what I've been up to down here. This is my engine yard, my engine servicing facility, and it features uh, uh, a, a Penzi detailed um, turntable here. This is made by Millhouse River Studios, and it, it's uh, fully command control. And I have this four stall engine house made by Altoona Model Works, a uh, custom configured kit with a full detailed interior and everything. And uh, as you can see, here's some of my third rail engines. I have a Decapod, I have a big six sitting over here. I've got a nice M1A and uh, one of their J1As over there. And uh, as you see, it's a full service steam uh, facility here. And this scratch built calling tower is based on the one that still stands today in Durand and Grand Haven. It's a Grand Trunk prototype. Uh, slightly modified to fit the area, it's just a little bit narrower. And, uh, Pretty easy to show. Yeah. That engine sounds good just sitting by it too. You can change like what kind of uh, air air compressor it has on yeah. and everything. It's like pretty wild. Are these buildings uh, styrene or? This is like resin. So this is another Altoona Model Works. It's like a um, it's like a custom configured resin kit. So he'll he'll build the uh, length that you want and like if you want a lean to machine shop on there. Yeah. Um, I had one on the layout before and it was like Maybe like this, you know, only like three quarters the length of this. So this would be the second time I built one. And I kind of wanted a dead end shop like that. And, um, but I wanted this machine shop here to be on the front of the layout. It's one of the first, besides the roundhouse, this probably would have been like the second building I really detailed in, with the interior. I did my own LED lighting and stuff. And, uh, so that was a lot of fun. And I, if you saw over there in the town. I would have built the layout a lot differently if I would have known I would have gotten into I would have if I, if I didn't it was better at planning or I just didn't foresee me doing all this 3D printing stuff and then doing the interiors. No. I bought the first 3D printer because I wanted to make like these KD mount adapters for all my engine projects because I have mm -hmm. to modify everything.
control you know it's AC to the track it's 18 volts AC to the track yeah. and uh, it's controlled through these are just transformers fixed voltage transformers and these are the track power controllers so in that environment you know all the engines have a, like a radio receiver board in them with a Lyle stuff um, MTH uses something slightly different. Their signal is actually imposed on the track through their DCS, but I, I run all Lionel stuff because I like the way their system works. But with this Blue Nami stuff, all I gotta do is turn on my track power and it sits there like any other TMCC or Legacy engine until I start running it. With it. And uh, it's pretty nice. So, very, very smooth. of all the nice sound features and the uh, lighting outputs and stuff like that, the control is amazing because it's totally tunable, which you can't do it with three rail hardware, you know, um, what you get with three rail hardware is kind of what you get, you know, you, you, you install it, you're like, man, is this going to run good? I hope it does. Um, it's like kind of a short bet if you're hooking up like third rail stuff, they usually have good gear ratios and stuff, but if you're... Uh, messing around with something you don't know about, it's strictly experimental, but with this stuff, it's really tunable, you know? Even like the acceleration and deceleration, you didn't have any of that choice with with the current tech. And this, when I say current tech, some of the stuff I'm running is like already 20 plus years old, you know? Right. Yeah, they never, because it's like pretty much proprietary stuff, they probably look at it like, well, if we provide hardware for people to put in engines, we're going to lose new engine sales, you know? We're gonna do yeah. So I, I no, they, they must not understand model railroad. They really don't. They're kind of an odd, they're such an odd company. It's, it's tough being a three-railer, you know? Because they made, as you can see, they, they produced all this nice scale hardware that you can buy. I always thought the prices were pretty reasonable for what you're getting. And like I said, they dump it on the lab. You're running like in like five minutes flat. You know, if the quality control's okay, but you know, they made all this stuff, but then they still kinda held modelers at arm's length, you know, like like, yeah, we're not gonna let you tune your motor drivers, we're not gonna let you change sounds. And I think the thing was maybe their reluctance, they didn't want to support you know, all the right, you know. all the stuff that goes with it. Like, hey, you know, want to build it and be done. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what, you know, the bread and butter is to build it, sell it to you, and mm -hmm. you get what you got, you know. Mm -hmm. um. Just in tools in there are 3D printed like the lathes and stuff. Oh that's nice. Shelves that's all done with my resin printer. The little table lamps in there. I did all that stuff with my resin printer. I can move this stuff around too if you want to get different shots. Just... And then now it's like, it's really cheap and they're getting better, you know? Yep. 